will as many as have a contrary opinion say nay, the eye serve it. The import of that, import of that uh, amendment is that the proposed amendment by the leader of majority and that by Honorable Samuel Chepkonga automatically fall. So I will put the global question that clause 30, I now put the question that clause 30 is amended be part of the bill. Will as many as are of that opinion say aye? aye. Will as many as are of a contrary opinion say nay? The aye serve it. Clause 31. I propose the question that clause 31 be part of the bill. Chair. Thank you very much, Madam Chairperson. I propose that clause 31 of the bill be amended as shown on the order paper. Uh, we've set out what is to be done, what is the rationale. Uh, to limit the clause to the affairs to the affairs of a public officer and is or a dependent children only, not not spouses, not wives, not um, anybody else. Also, we have to maintain the existing model of declarations to entities that directly supervise the conduct and the ethics of the various categories of public officers as the ESCC lacks sufficient capacity to process the declarations of all public officers. This was a responsibility which the Act was giving to ESCC alone. Now we are actually devolving this to the reporting agencies as we do today so that Parliament, we can do it here, uh, PSC and everywhere else, while other people go to what we have done in the next proposed amendments and then in that way ESCC is able to handle the little work that goes to it. Otherwise it doesn't have the capacity. Allow me to propose a question. I propose a question that clause 31 be amended as proposed by the chair. Majority leader. Honorable Speaker, I've uh, listened to the amendment by the chair on behalf of the committee, and I agree with him that uh, all your other relatives, and since we even uh, there is an amendment on the definition of relatives, but I see he's leaving dependent children and removing the spouse. And I'm just wondering whether your spouse is part of you or whether your spouse could be construed to be part of your assets or your liabilities. <laughs> because I think under the current system, and I could be corrected if I'm wrong, you declare your assets, what you own as an individual, and also what you own jointly with your spouse, and even what your spouse owns. And probably, because I have been declaring my assets, and I have been doing it that way, even what my spouse owns. Because if we remove spouse, then it means public officers can transfer all corruptly acquired assets to their spouses, which they will never need to declare. And since the spouse may not be a public officer, they are never required to make a declaration. I would really uh, want to plead with the chair to return the word spouse or spouses Uh, so Honourable. that so that it covers your children under 80, under 18 years, dependent children, and also your spouse or spouses. Honourable uh, Shakil, thank you. Uh, I agree with the majority leader in the in the point of spouses. Uh, some of us may have more than one spouse, but there is one other element that we seem to have forgotten. The, the come we stay. Under the Marriage Act, if you are staying or cohabiting in any way with, with, with the alternative sex, especially a woman, she is considered your spouse or the man is considered your spouse. If there are the cases that public officers have not declared those who have they been living with for a number of years, who are, who are considered spouses under the Marriage Act, 
I think we need to cover that particular aspect because what happens is they might be putting these assets in the name of the come we stay partner who is not considered, uh, who is not called a spouse under this particular act, but under the marriage act, they're very much called, they're very much given the same status as spouse. So I, as much as I support the majority leader, I ask that the come we stay um, arrangement ladies uh, and spouses be considered as spouse. <laughs> I don't know exactly what the Marriage Act says in terms of registration. Honorable Mark Mwenje. Thank you, Chair. I think um, perhaps if I can assist my senior, I think the term he was looking for is cohabitee. That would be the term. But uh, Honorable uh, Chair, I think I would tend to agree with the leader majority because we have cases that we're investigating, are invest currently being investigated by the EACC, DCI, where assets have been hidden, uh, by, where public officers who have been investigated, and these assets have been found to be registered under their spouses or relatives' names. So I think we really need to look at this provision once again, Chair, uh, that, that I, I, I think we shouldn't leave it out. There, there is, uh, I, the matter is judice in Kiambu, but for those who understand the cases that have been ongoing on in Kiambu County relating to a former governor, will understand exactly what I'm trying to say. Thank you, Chair. Before I give other interventions, Chair Jaylak, kindly uh, clarify on this and also indicate if you'd be willing to move any further amendment on the same. Um, no. Uh, I've listened to the leader of majority and I've used my own conscience. The truth is, if my wife is not a public officer, she is not going to do the declaration. And therefore, any... No, she's not going to do any declaration under, under any of the laws. This law and the leadership and integrity, she will not, she will not make any declaration. The net effect is that a corrupt public officer will launder the property through his wife, the spouse, or through the husband, whoever it is. So, in my view, I believe, I'm convinced, and I wish to drop the proposed amendment. Chair, are you confirming you want to drop um, you dropping A and B? Both. Do you want to amend both? This is clause number 31. The one we are pro dropping is on A. Yes. Because from the amendments on the order paper chair, there is A, then there is B. In sub clause 4, by deleting paragraph C. Are you dropping that amendment? 